The best Muslim follows the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him. What are these examples? The example of beauty, the example of kindness, the example of compassion, the example of the duty unto Allah being fulfilled in the best possible way. You know, he was a balance. You know, there is a hadith, a beautiful hadith, explaining how important it is for us to fulfill the rights of everyone. It is a hadith of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam fostered a relationship of brotherhood between him and Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu. And Salman al-Farisi noticed that the wife of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu was not really interested in, you know, adorning herself for her husband. Not at all. So he asked her a question, you know, what's going on? Is there something, you know, there's a problem here? And she says, you know, your brother, this Abu Darda, he doesn't really have any interest in anything worldly. Nothing, nothing. So he was a little bit uh, irked by that. He watched Abu Darda. At night he was praying. Praying. Imagine praying. Is prayer a bad thing? No. So Salman al-Farisi gets up and told him, hey, go to sleep. Hey, what do you mean? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. He went to sleep because obviously this man is more knowledgeable. L later on he gets up. He, he wants to pray again. Salman al-Farisi gets up and says, go to sleep. What do you mean go to sleep? Go to sleep. He went to sleep. Second, when, when the last portion of the night was remaining, he says, hey, get up. Now you can pray. So this, he was perplexed. He was wondering, what's going on here? So Salman al-Farisi says, look, my brother, your wife has a right over you. Imagine, he's talking about salah, prayer. To stand in prayer, listen carefully because I'm going to draw a very important conclusion to this. To stand in prayer. He's standing in prayer. He's not doing anything bad. It's something really brilliant. It's a plug in with Allah. It's the most important way of plugging in with your maker. Okay. So he's standing in prayer and he's being told, no, your wife comes first. Allahu Akbar. This is voluntary prayer. It's not got to do with farah, right? We're not talking here of that which is compulsory. No, you have a right that you need to fulfill with us. Wallahi. It's not salah. We ignore our wives, our family members, our children, just because we're sitting at a coffee shop. We're not talking about salah here, prayer. We're talking about wasting time at a coffee shop. And your wife is busy texting you, hey. And your friends are saying, ah, chicken, chicken. Wallahi, I don't mind being called a chicken for as long as my wife knows how I crow. Subhanallah. I don't mind. I don't mind them calling me whatever name for as long as I have a happy home. Why? I'm the best Muslim. I fulfill the rights. The wife is a first class citizen. The rest of them are only residents. They come and go. Their permits expire as well. You know how it is to renew a permit. Yes. These are citizens. These are proper. That's your spouse. You don't just replace them. That's your family. Those are your children. Irreplaceable. Given by Allah. Those are your parents. But what you were doing. Salman al-Farisi is telling Abu Darda, your prayer, you are praying a little bit too much. Go and fulfill the rights of your wife. Show her some importance. Express to her, and I am telling you, express to her how beautiful she is. Subhanallah. A good Muslim is the one who is best to his family members. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. There's the hadith. We heard it a thousand times, a million times. Wallahi, my brothers, many of us are struggling because we just mediocre Muslims. We say, I'm a Muslim. What's your name? Ah, oh, this is my name. You know, and that's it. And the way you treat your family members, it's like they're nothing, man, nothing. Give them an ear. Listen to them. Look at them in the eye. Tell them you're shining. You know, when I, when you're out and the moon is out, I can't see the moon because you're dazzling. Say things. Say things. Subhanallah. Say things. That's the best Muslim. There's the hadith. The best from amongst you is he or she who is best to the spouse. Some of us are so weak, so weak. You know, someone was asking me recently about Valentine's Day. Okay. So what happened? I said, I, as a best Muslim, every day for me is a day of love. I'm in love with who? With my spouse, with my family members. Every day I tell them so many times I love you. I message them. You know, on WhatsApp, you have a heart. You make use of it. Please, to the right people. That heart blows up and suddenly starts pumping. Have you seen it? On WhatsApp, they're helping you. It's something romantic. Send it to the right people. And not only one day in the year, every day. That's your spouse. That's your family. Tell them how beautiful they are. Not like the woman who asks her husband, 
what are you going to give me for Valentine's? She, he says, what do you want for Valentine's? So she says, I just want one ring. I just want one ring. So he says, on the landline or mobile? May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. If this is the attitude we have, that you only want to express love on one day, you can't be a best Muslim. A best Muslim every day, you get up in the morning, you thank Allah for giving you a husband. There are so many people crying to get married. May Allah make it easy for you to get married, men and women. May Allah grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes and you have a spouse, but we're fighting over what? Petties. He didn't buy me the Chanel handbag that I wanted. Where? How can the best Muslim fight over small things? What's that? That's materialism. Is Allah going? Are you going to really complain to Allah? My husband's a bad man. You know what? He didn't give me spending money and he's terrible. Are you going to say that? That's that's you may be a Muslim, but you're not the best. The best is someone who says, look, you know what? I understand your condition and I know. Well, let me quickly equate it. The best husband is he who knows where to spend and when to spend. Don't be miserly, niggardly. You know, Abu Sufyan. His wife came to complain radiallahu an, to Rasulullah about him. You know, perhaps he might not have spent here or there. And the Prophet وسلم, actually allowed her to take from the wealth when it was needed to say, you can take. Don't worry, because that's his duty. But we want to be the best. The best is he who knows I will spoil my family. Yes, once in a while, you don't have to overspend. The best Muslim is he or she who adjusts his life or her life based on the income that Allah has blessed them with. So if I have an income of a thousand dirhams a week, for example, I tailor make my life according to that. I don't live beyond my means in a way that I have a car that's not mine. I have a phone that's not mine. I have a, 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 an apartment that's not mine. Nothing is mine. I'm struggling every month to pay this and to pay that and to pay just because I want to live up to the Joneses. Even the Joneses have come down. I think they call it the Dow Jones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, that's the best Muslim, the one who knows how to budget. The one who understands this is a gift of Allah. It's, it's a responsibility. You need to strike the balance. You need to know. So that hadith, as I was speaking about Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, the point I've raised is loud and clear to say, if he was told you have a right, your body has a right over you, your spouse has a right over you, everything has a right over you. So give the due of everything and everyone to everything and everyone. Do we do that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us.